Hey guys, Mabuhai and welcome to Jay's Nest. Today we're going to talk about DIY stretchy flats. I have this basket right here with some DIY stretchy flats in it. It's a very simple process, so I want to talk you through some of the things that I do when making DIY stretchy flats. So the first thing I do is I buy stretchy flat material. The material that I personally like for stretchy flats is a bamboo stretch French terry material. I love French terry. I have this one. This one's made of jersey, bamboo jersey. Super soft, extremely stretchy. However, it's not nearly as thick. I also should have looked at the GSMs of the jersey materials. This is another jersey. I bought my fabric from Kindrel, but you can also get it from places like Nature's Fabric. I heard someone like Fabric Fairy or Fairy Fabric or something like that. I've never heard of that site. I've never used it. But I know the most popular websites are Kinderol and Nature's Fabric. Nature's Fabric has a huge selection. The price point is a little higher, especially for the colored flats. They have a bigger variety there. I think Nature's Fabric also offers Sezzle. And Sezzle is like this layaway program where it's split into four different payments, so it makes it a little more affordable. So let's go over the process of how I make these. These are no sew. All you need is something to measure these with and something to cut them with. In 2018, I used child safety scissors. Step one, you need to prep these before you do anything with them. This fabric needs to be prepped. Prepping is just the process of washing brand new fabric. You wanna wash any chemicals out of it, any of the natural oils that can come in some of these fabrics. And when you prep it and you dry it, it'll shrink a little bit and that's good. That's exactly what you want. Because it would suck to cut this into 30 by 30 inches on brand new fabric and then you wash it and then it turns into 27 and 1 fourth by 26 inches and you're like, Wait a minute, I need 30 by 30. So prep it. You know, I personally wash mine three times. You can wash it more. I personally would not suggest washing it less than two times. But most people, they usually prep this fabric three to five times on average. You can definitely prep it more. Next step is you want to measure the whole entire fabric. You want to measure the length and you also want to measure the width. This will give you a good idea of how many flats you can cut out of this. Almost every single chunk of fabric that I've had has measured at about 60 inches wide. And since I'm making flats that are 30 by 30 inches, that made it super easy. I would fold the fabric in half. And since it was 60 inches, I knew that if I folded it in half, it would be 30 inches. I measured again just to make sure it was at that 30 inches and then I would cut at the seam. You have to decide what size flats you want to do. I personally like size 30 just because I'm diapering toddlers and it's more absorbent because there's more fabric than a 28 by 28 inch. Most one size flats are about 27 by 27 inches or 28 by 28 inches and toddler size flats are about 30 by 30 inches or 32 by 32 inches. However, you can do whatever dimensions you want. This is your diaper. Do what makes sense for the fabric dimensions that you have. So you will have to do a little math here depending on what you personally need. You know, if you're doing newborn flats that are 20 inches and your fabric is 60 inches wide, you can fit three newborn flats in that width, which is really cool. And then the next step is just to cut, very simple. The cool thing about this fabric is that it does not fray. So when you cut this fabric, it doesn't fray. You don't have to worry about sewing the edges. Sewing the edges and serging the edges is more of an aesthetic type of look. And it's not necessary for these. Can you do that? Absolutely. Especially if you're handy, especially if you know how to sew. That is a great way to get a nice clean edge on these. However, it's not necessary to do that. So if you're like me and you just don't have access to a sewing machine, the raw edges are good enough, baby. And that's it. Literally, that's it. You prep it and wash it and get it all dried. You measure it to see what dimensions you're working with. You do the math and then you cut it and that's it. I personally think of stretchy flats as like the luxury flat of the cloth diapering world. Are these necessary? No. Are these amazing? Yes. Here's why I like stretchy flats. Stretchy flats are really trim. Look at how trim that is. Very thin. On average, stretchy flats can hold like 17 to 25-ish ounces. I've seen some brands be able to hold up to like 28 ounces depending on the fabric blend. That is incredible. This is the most absorbent fabric in my stash. A lot of people who make pre-flats use this material. It's very soft. It wears really well over time. The edges do not fray when you cut them. If you make them from home, if you do DIY stretchy flats, they cost about six to seven dollars a piece. But this is soft, this is stretchy, and for the amount that you pay, it's totally worth it. The thing about stretchy flats is, the more yards you get, the more flats you can get. 
So out of two yards, I got about four flats out of it. There was extra fabric as well. So I get about two flats per yard. I'm probably talking way more than I need to talk when we're talking about DIY stretchy flats. Simple. Prep it, measure it, cut it. That's it. I will be making some more stretchy flats because I've been having some fun hand dyeing them. I'll show you a few that I did hand dye. Here are some things that I hand dyed. This was just an ice dye. A lot of these are really faded and I'm thinking I just need some more soda ash in my washes. I have this geode dye. I have this, this one's so cute. This one's a little newborn geode dye. So I've been having a lot of fun dyeing fabric. And so I bought some more fabric so I can dye some more flats. And I'm thinking I might just record that whole process of when I get the fabric in, prepping it, measuring it, cutting it, and then dyeing it for fun. And just kind of showing you all the different flats that come out of that. But yeah, that's it for today's video. I feel like I'm, I'm talking too much. <laughs> I'll leave my 2018 video down below as well. That one is way more in depth. This is just more of a laid back chatty chat video because it is a laid back process. It's not, it's not that complicated, but like if you want something really in detail, I'll leave that video down below. But again, it's a super laid back process. Very simple, very easy. Probably the easiest DIY project I've ever done in my life was making DIY stretchy flats. But yeah, that's it for today's video. Thank you guys so much for watching. I'll see you next time.